Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, this is our first Q&A of the afternoon, and I'm delighted to welcome Kerry Goldberg from Harper's Bazaar, who will be Hi. asking the questions, and um, a little baker from London who has had an interesting 12 months, Miss Claire Patak. <laughs> Ladies, over to you. Right, should we just jump to it? Um, okay. So I guess, tell us about you. Like, what's your style? How do you describe your style to a bride? Like, how do you start? All that stuff. Um, the main thing that I, that I focus on is the flavor, is the taste. So that's always been my thing. I'm really interested in making a wedding cake that actually tastes really good, because that didn't used to sort of be the thing to do. <laughs> it's quite hard to do that, actually, because you have to make it so far in advance. and. It has to withstand extreme temperatures sometimes or you know, an uneven surface that it's sitting on. So there's lots of reasons why cakes are less fresh <laughs> or why in England the tradition of a uh, fruit cake is really um, is a tradition. Um, it's, it's so stable. Um, but for me, I really want the cake to be eaten and enjoyed and I want it to look really fresh and really natural. Uh, I think it's just the way that we kind of eat everything now, you know, um, and I don't see why cake should be any different. So. And how did you get started? And I think a lot of people are probably surprised to hear that you don't have a British accent, that you're actually American. <laughs> um, so where are you from and how did you kind of get started in food and in the business? Yeah, I'm from Northern California and I, I grew up there. Uh, learned to bake from my mom and my grandmother and then <coughs> was sort of always my my weekend job um, uh, to be working in bakeries when I was growing up um, my Saturday job <laughs> and then I ended up going into uh, food professionally in restaurants and becoming a pastry chef um, I lost the thread of the question. Oh, that was what I asked. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and in terms, I think you had mentioned to me at one point that did you pursue a culinary career first, or was it always pastry for you? Uh, no, so I, I actually wanted to be a filmmaker. I was really, um, <laughs> which is also why I love, I love the visual. I love using Instagram because I get to sort of like, you know, do the photography thing. And I love food styling, which I've done professionally for years, and then also did all my own cookbooks. So I, um, that's sort of how I get that, get that uh, visual thing into my work. But, um, yeah, so I studied film and wanted to do that, and then I did it for a year, worked for a Hollywood director, and was just not happy, so I went back to food, but always pastry. Awesome. Um, yeah. Okay, so now we'll cut to the juicy bits, right? Because I think like we all just want to ask the same question. How on earth did you meet Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, and how did you end up doing their wedding? <laughs> um, it was really cool, actually, because when my first, um, not my first, actually my fourth cookbook, but my first cookbook that's about my business, which is the Violet Bakery in London. Um, when it came out in the US about three years ago, Megan had her blog, The Tig, which I don't know if you guys know about. Um, it was a really cool lifestyle blog. And she wrote about my book, and she interviewed me. And um, it, was, I, it was really cool, because I remember that it was one of the like best interviews that I'd had because you know you get like asked the same questions like over and over and over again and it's like <laughs> this is good too <laughs> and um, but it was unique and they were engaged and it was it was a cool it stood out um, and then and then they printed a couple recipes as well but then you know I'd totally like forgotten that that was her and then I got this email um, uh, I guess last January, yeah, uh, to ask me to come to Kensington Palace and casual, casual, <laughs> and bring some like things to try. No brief at all. Uh, so that was intense too. And and then I put it all together. So I guess that's how she found me. It was a very personal choice, I think. And what was? And we'll get more into that in a second because I think the mm -hmm. fact that you are from California and she's from California, kind of. There's so much speculation in the U.S. Like, is she going to use Californian vendors? Oh, no, everyone's from London. And then, fun fact, you are. <laughs> um, but I think that if you could just walk us through like what the normal planning process is like for a wedding cake versus what your royal wedding cake process was like. Because <laughs> um, well, my guess I, is that's not normal. Yeah, no, yeah. it's different. Um, it's a little bit. <laughs> so um, our process is very simple. I have a very 
modest space and we do uh, bespoke wedding cakes but we also just have like a few styles that we offer we, we sort of always um, because of it my the actual facility is so small we don't have the space and capacity to do some of the bigger more elaborate cakes and I prefer the sort of the style that we do anyway uh, for me I, I actually really love incredible huge uh, wedding cakes and I used to make them and work for someone and actually we, we were talking about this earlier I was we won the Today Show wedding um, competition <laughs> years ago we had to like ship the cake to New York it was crazy from California it was really stressful but um, but so because my space is small we sort of have like a really simple offering and so when we meet with clients you know this is what we have we offer this and the way to make it bespoke is through the flavors and through the flowers um, now that we did um, Megan's cake, we're starting to do a lot more. Things have changed, I assume. Things have changed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we're renovating our space, which is really exciting. So we're having, we're doing a whole renovation project, which will give us the facility that we need desperately. And so when a bride comes to you, mm. what are the questions that you're asking her? And what are the steps, kind of? Do you start with where the wedding is and the inspiration, and then you do a yeah. cake tasting? Like, yes. kind of like, I assume there are a few brides in the room. Like, what are the step-by-step -step processes of it's a different. choosing a cake vendor and then also yeah, working with it's them? it's different. It's different. Usually, when they come to us, they've already decided that they want us to do it. Okay. Um, which is also the way with with the royal couple it was like it was very cool because it's just like I think that my style is so specific that if they come to me, then it's because that's what they want. So um, it's not so much that we're trying to sell it you know, mm -hmm. um, in that way. But we, um, I was listening to, I don't know if you guys were listening to CeCe's talk before, um, but I love what she was saying about how, you know, you don't need to come with tons of ideas. Like we can work together, we can talk about it, discuss it. You can bring like, definitely bring ideas of, you know, moods that you like and things like that because that's really helpful to start the conversation. But then it's our job to kind of help you figure out how to do it and where, you know, and then all the little details about, you know, how and where and when we work out, so. And I'm sure you deal with indecision mm. quite often. Like how many tastings is too many tastings? We really just do like two tastings. Like we don't, you know, I mean we will do more, but it never seems to really get that crazy for us. And how many did you do with the royal couple? Four. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I know that you've kind of hearkened to this before that a traditional royal wedding cake is a fruit cake. It's like that yeah. 50 billion tiered, really dense, really Very ornate, heavy. heavy fruit cake. Yeah. Um, Partially, I think, because it's very traditional and also because it sits out forever. Like yeah. that cake is on display and photographed for hours before people yeah. even get close to eating it. What, what made them decide to do something less traditional? How did you get to that point? And how did you handle the fact that, I mean, also I think talk about the cake that you did make. Sure. Um, okay, so basically we, well, as I said, we didn't really get a brief. We were just, I was just asked to come and, and bring a few examples or ideas with me um, to the to the palace. And so I was like trying to figure out what they would want, you know, and it's, it's really hard because you don't want to like, I don't know, you just want to, you, you want to present the right thing to people, but you don't want to, um, assume anything and you want to do I wanted to do what I do best and so I for me it was it had to be a seasonal one that was like I there were two seasonal cakes that I presented to them um, the lemon and elderflower cake which they went for which elderflower if you're not familiar with is this beautiful um, heady kind of honey floral scent uh, and flavor that is uh, grows on trees and so it just uh, in May, right when the wedding was going to be, is like the entire country is like blooming with this flower, and it smells amazing in the streets. You can smell it like all over London, everywhere. Um, so it had to be that for me. And then with lemon is really delicious and fresh, and you know, and that's kind of traditional too to have like a lemon wedding cake. I yeah. think is a, you know, so it's not too crazy. And then I presented them also with um, <laughs> with the fruit cake because 
that's so traditionally English. Um, and then one of the first comments that they made when I met with them was like, we definitely don't want fruitcake. And I was like, right, that's just, let's not. <laughs> and then I'd also read like in some really ridiculous report that they wanted a banana cake. Like that was a rumor for a while. So I didn't make them a banana wedding cake. For the, for the tasters, I brought them whole decorated cakes. Like that was how I presented them. But then I brought them a little loaf of banana bread just as like a nod to that. But it was like, Mm. Just a rumor, so. And in terms of, you know, I think you spoke a little bit about shipping and having things out on an even surface. Mm. Like, you ended up doing, in terms of decor, like a naturally iced cake, right? It yeah. wasn't like a fondant covered cathedral. No, it was just buttercream. Yeah. yeah. How do you, can you give us just some recommendations on, I feel like a lot of brides are interested in doing like naked cakes or naturally yeah. iced cakes, but the fear is that they just won't last. Yeah. Or that they'll it's melt hard. and... What are your tips and tricks for that? I think um, it's really good to know the space. So if as a, as a wedding cake designer to have access to discussing with the other people that are involved in your wedding is like essential so that we know where it's going to be and what the temperature is going to be like. I mean, we showed up at a wedding recently and it was supposed to be inside and it was outside and it was hot. It was like it's really hot in London during these like summer heat waves. Um, and actually, Philippa, who's talking later, who also did the flowers for the royal wedding, <laughs> they were doing the flowers too for that same one. And we were like, oh my God, it's so hot. It's just, and you just sometimes, you know, you don't get the right information. But um, I mean, there's a million you do? tips and tricks. We just put it out and it was fine. It made it, you know, but there was nothing we could do. It was absolutely nothing we could do. It was like, uh, you know, at that point. But, you know, we, with the buttercream, we will keep it as cold, as cold, as cold as possible until it goes out, for example, um, which I'm sure you guys would know. But it's, um, and then it has, you know, five, six hours that it can sit and shouldn't really change at all. Um, a few more hours after that, it can start to weep a little bit or, you know, kind of <laughs> shift around. But usually people don't really notice at that point. They've what already are, seen it. So that's fine. <laughs> They're drunk. What are your... <laughs> what are your thoughts about just in terms of like budget management and event flow management? Like in the U.S., people have a lot of opinions about like the sheet cake in the kitchen. Yes. Like, is it something you recommend? Do you so, like it? Yeah, I, I think the sheet cake is is really a good idea if you need to get the cake cut and out to people in a quick way. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'm not a big fan of. Uh, you know, like a pol like a pol um, polystyrene in, Eng in England. What's it called here? Styrofoam. Uh, I was like, I have no styrofoam idea. dummy cake because I just think, I, I mean, it's just something else. Like it can be amazing, but to me, I'm I'm just such a like realist. I wanted the real thing out there, so I would uh, I would choose to do it that way. Um, I did a cake recently where we had for uh, Henry Holland, who's a fashion designer, and he wanted a cake that was based on this Will Cotton sculpture, which is basically a cake that <laughs> it's like it, the sizes go like this all the way up, and it's incredibly unstable. It's the scariest, craziest thing I've ever done, um, and it had to be all real cake. So it was like. <laughs> It's a lot of dowels. <laughs> it's a lot of dowels. One yeah. all the way through the whole thing, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think um, we, you know, we did that for, for the royal wedding. We did uh, all all of the cake that was on display was not served for that the first reception for 650 people because they had to serve 650 people in five minutes. So you just, it's impossible. And you want to see the cake cutting ceremony because that's just such a lovely part of the whole day. And it's um, its so worth having that moment to, to do that. Um, it's also a nice moment of distraction. Like yeah. while the couple's cutting, you have passers coming out, but like, exactly. but not too early because it looks really weird if cake's being passed on Before trays and they, they haven't cut, cut the cake yet. That would not yeah. be good. <laughs> but yeah, so you, so you, um, can then do other things. So what we did was we had these bite-sized pieces cut um, and they were passed and people could, we, we did like uh, test runs of this with Prince Harry taking a bite and taking two bites. It was so funny. I'm like, your one bite is definitely two bites for me, but that's okay. Um, and then uh, they took the, then they had a second reception. This is slightly different because they obviously had like so many parties, but then they, they had a second reception with fewer people in the evening and they used 
one of the cakes that was from the display from earlier that they served then. Then they took uh, another one of the, there were four that we did for the display. They took another one of those and froze it for the christening. And then they donated the other two that were left. So um, that's a cool thing to do too, donate cake if you need to make a lot. Um, and there's always people around that are gonna be happy to eat cake so. totally. <laughs> when it tastes good. <laughs> and I think that obviously, long story short, like their wedding planning process was very different from a classic bride's wedding planning process and they had, you know, f how many, I mean, how many events did they have versus, so if you could just, I mean, for anyone who doesn't know all the different events that they had and that you made cake for, can you just kind of walk us through well, that? Well, they had, um, they had a, the, the main reception, they had the wedding ceremony in the chapel and then everybody walked up to the castle, Windsor Castle, uh, to St. George's Hall. And in the hall, that's where they served the 650 main guests, the cake and some past uh, hors d'oeuvres uh, and drinks. And everything was standing because it's so many people. And then they had a second reception later for about 250 people that was more private. Um, and then they had another party later in the yeah. evening as well. So. Um, and they had different chefs for the different parties. So yeah, that is probably not very typical. Is there anything from their wedding planning process that you feel like a bride could adapt to her planning process to make it that much more seamless? Well, I feel like they were so organized. I mean, that, that was one thing that was really, I really appreciated. Um, I'm happy to actually have more meetings if it helps because you know, people often ask me if I was nervous about the about that cake, you know, and I actually felt so confident because we we just knew we had ticked all the boxes and checked and double checked everything, and so um, you know, it's a relief. It was like really exciting when it actually finally came and we could just you know set it up. And I was I have I did have nerves while I was putting the flowers on the cake and arranging it on these these the. The cake stands that we used were these incredible gilt cake stands. So it's sterling silver dipped in gold, and they're <laughs> hundreds of years old. And they had all these amazing kind of, I mean, they were kind of, you know, they'd been used. So they were a bit dented here and there, and but it made them so much more beautiful and that they were from the family. So, um, but actually, yeah, like working with, there was this one man whose whole job is to actually shine those. <laughs> Steven, he's awesome. We work together um, a lot. And so, you know, that's nerve wracking when you're just like dealing with precious heirlooms like that, you know. But organization, obviously, even organization. down to, I think that people don't often think about how much organization can impact their key, like their music, their production, their lighting, but yeah. then even down to like your cake vendor yeah. and your personal flowers and all of those things are just so. <laughs> Much better. There's just the benefit of I think having everything, Planning. and it helps when you have like a team of fifty that works for you personally. Yeah. But they yeah. didn't have a huge team. Oh, working for them. They're quite. They're, you guys, we're getting like the real scoop. I'm like very. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't crazy. You know, there was. I had one contact person that I dealt with, um, who <coughs> was planning, and then I had the chef, the Queen's chef. I worked very closely with too, because the other thing was that we couldn't make the cake at Violet because for two reasons. One was it was so high profile, there was a lot of press like trying to, like paparazzi basically, trying to take photos of the cake and, um, and us. And then also just the sheer size of, it, of what we were producing, our place is too small. So they invited us to make the cakes at Buckingham Palace and so we worked really closely with the... Um, <laughs> with the <laughs> it's so normal, guys. It's so normal. <laughs> yeah, um, with their with the Queen's chef, and he and he was incredible, and their team they were just like so welcoming and helpful, and it was literally like the most positive wedding experience I've ever had. It was so easy. What was on their wedding menu? <laughs> um, <laughs> you guys don't want to know. We can move on. Yes. I want to know what they ate personally. <laughs> but, but. The, um, so the second meal was made by, there's a really great chef in London called Claire Smith, and she's a michelin star chef. She has a restaurant called Core. She's Irish, and she's super cool. And she did like an Irish potato um, as one of the dishes. Like literally, it's just like a little sort of boiled potato. <laughs> 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 
That's awesome. <laughs> um, I kind of have this fantastic, like, just vision of like Megan in a wedding gown eating a baked potato. But that's just me. Um, what's one mistake that you feel like brides make in the planning process when they're working with you? Whether it's something related to organization or indecision, or I mean, what do you encounter that you would just give as a piece of advice? Like, don't do X. I don't know. That's tough. What did I say? Tenera, I mean, in term, I guess, better question. Imagine, like, everyone here is your best friend and yeah. they're planning their wedding, which a lot of them are. What's <laughs> one piece of advice that you would give just in terms of approaching the planning process? I feel like um, when you're approaching the process, you know, the, the main thing that you want to do is you want to create an experience for your loved ones. And it's so important that. Um, you know, everybody has stories of people getting, like, we were just hearing about lost invitations, or, you know, the, there's so many feelings that can be hurt at weddings. It's so intense. There's the, the tensions can be so high um, with family, especially. So I think, um, I think if, if you go into it just wanting to, you know, create this really beautiful experience for them and you plan it, do, make sure that you do take the time to, to plan it properly, and then you will have time then to enjoy it yourself. And I think that's so hard and so many brides you see just like stressed and not remembering the day, you know. So I think like starting early, planning, giving yourself plenty of time and getting it, just getting everything signed off on well in advance is going to be a much better day for, for everyone, yeah. How do you feel about groom's cakes? I love groom's cakes. Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I just did not expect you to say that. Okay. <laughs> I made it. I actually made it. I suggested a groom's cake for them, but they didn't go for it. But yeah, I do. I, I think it's cool. It's when you get to make the chocolate cake too, because usually people don't want a chocolate wedding cake. Um, I have done a lot of them, but it's it's unusual. And so um, the groom's cake is always where you can get the chocolate in there. When do you recommend serving it? Well, it can be the night before the rehearsal dinner. Yeah. That's when I recommend it, yeah. also for like a bazaar because they don't look good together. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, definitely not together. <laughs> that was what I was trying to get. <laughs> yeah, I think the rehearsal there is good. And in terms of, you talked briefly about shipping cake. Yeah. How does that work? Like, let's say you're getting married in the Caribbean or you're getting married on you know, in California, you're a New York bride. Yeah. What do you do? Well, for us, again, the kind of cakes that we do, I I would go there, find a kitchen, and make it there. Um, and I've done that um, all over the world. But I, uh, with the, the, the Today Show wedding cake that we did, it was a fondant covered cake, and we froze it and then shipped it so that it had enough time to someone's nodding knowingly um, so that it could sort of thaw out in the shipping process and it survived and then you know you the decorations um, you could carry those on or you could send those as well really really well packed in bubble wrap so um, I mean I've traveled like with so many weird things in my carry-on bags over the years <laughs> making cakes for people in other locations it's funny you get funny looks but you, but you everybody loves cake so you always like make friends and like the, even the security people always you can bribe like, them this is kind of cool <laughs> you can so, yeah. bribe them with little cake bites yeah, like, your security. So like it's full of chocolate or it's full of, like white chocolate fondant you know so. I think actually that was my last cool. my last formal question for you. But I feel like people might have some other ones. I might turn it over if anybody has any questions for Claire. Are you the nodder about the I'm fondant? The nodder, yes, about the frozen cake and the fondant. Um, I wanted to hear your impression of this whole like there's this huge trend with the dessert bar. Mm -hmm. My philosophy is that came out of the fact that most wedding cakes taste disgusting. Yeah, but if you talk about that. I respect that. Bride and groom, and they tasted your cake and they know it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's okay to say, look, they really actually need a dessert bar. Yeah, have a really great. Yeah, absolutely. Did everybody hear that question? Yeah, yeah. Um, good projecting. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with you. And in fact, um, we were talking earlier, and I was saying that you know I often say that you can serve the cake as dessert. So. Um, there's so much food that happens that you don't actually need that extra thing. But also, if you want, it's quite nice to have dessert too. So if you want to do that, I often tell people to sell to serve the cake, like for a midnight snack. So later in the evening, all cut up, it gets passed around, and it's so fun when you're at a wedding and you suddenly get this like 
you know, sweet kind of treat in the evening. So yeah, but I, I don't think you have to do both. <coughs> so, yeah, over there. Oh my God, wow. <laughs> <laughs> On it. I love it. Hi, um, I just wanted to ask you, why did you decide um, to move to London and to work out of there and not here? So I moved to London um, for love. <laughs> And then um, when I was working as a pastry chef at Chez Panisse in California, and then I, I moved to London, and I, it, I, I don't know if you guys know Chez Panisse, but it's kind of a really special, special place to work. Um, as, as an employee, working there is like, really amazing. Um, and so then to go to any other restaurant after that is always like difficult. So um, when I got to London, I just decided to start my own business right away. So I started a market stall because I could afford it and cooked, baked at home, and then it evolved into the business. So um, yeah, I love London though. It's been 14 years now, so. Since I got the mic, I'll ask you. Yeah. I'm a big fan. Thank you for inviting me for Instagram. Oh, good. Um, Thanks for coming. How has the um, English you know, dessert palette, I mean, it's so different. I mean, sticky toffee pudding, how has yeah. it influenced you? Because it is so different from the American. It's so different. Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, the English tradition of baking is really incredible. I'm a huge fan. And when I got there, I didn't quite realize how um, beloved it was. So people have these really strong feelings about certain cakes there. Um, and a lot of it has to do with um, when people are growing up there and going to school. They're, they have these school dinners and they have these, but someone else is not. You get these things like jam roly poly and um, sticky toffee pudding uh, and these kind of uh, trifle and these things that a lot of Americans don't really like. You know, a lot of raisins, a lot of like dried fruit, or we're like, oh my God, it has raisins. They're like, oh my God, it has raisins. <laughs> Totally different. So having a market stall was really amazing because I could get the the response and reaction from all my customers really directly, like immediately. And people tell you at a stall, whereas having a bakery, people would just um, put a review up on, you know, Google review or something, and not give you that direct feedback. So it's a great way to, you know, find out what people want. Now, are you a fan of the Great British Cake Bake Off? The show. Um, I always get in trouble. I get asked this question all the time. Uh, I am not a fan of the show. Why? <laughs> it's so bad. I'm going to get so much. Like, Why? I don't know. I've never watched it. Not going to lie. But tell me. I, what I like about it, what I do like about it, is that it creates this great. There's been like all these spin offs that like people have made their own sort of bake offs and they get together and they bake and they have contests and all that kind of stuff is really fun. And I, I think it's. Um, it's super positive and great. And people have like office bake-offs and everything, you know. But the actual show, to me, I just I don't know. I find it really frustrating to watch. Why is it crazy? <laughs> Hi. Um, I have a question. So you opened your bakery in 2010. Mm -hmm. um, what is the difference that you saw in business before Royal Wedding and after Royal Wedding? It's insane. <laughs> it's like really, really, really been good for business. Um, we had, I had built a really nice following already. I would think we, um, I, I started my business on a street that is a really quiet residential street and a lot of people that I have, I have a lot of friends that are in restaurants and um, really huge like chains and successful restaurants, um, totally different to what I do. And I would always ask them for advice and kind of just, you know, as business mentors, and I have a lot of great friends who would give me this advice, and they would—they were all like, "Do not open there; it's a disaster. Like nobody will come. There's no foot traffic, you know." And I was like, "But it's the only rent that I can afford. Like I have to start somewhere." Um, and I lived on the same street too, so I could like work really late and walk home. Um, so. Against all odds, we did really well anyway, which I'm really proud of. And um, but then that just like overnight doubled our business. 
so it was good. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> so you had a question? Um, in the States, pie is sort of creeping to the dessert table. Uh, in London, it's mostly savory pies. Do you see sweet pies? No, they're not there, and it's such a shame. I love pie, and, and that was probably like one of the first things I learned how to bake was apple pie from our, we had a, an apple tree in my yard when I was growing up, um, and black wild blackberries. Um, yeah, no, it, I was talking about this with some English friends recently because I'm like, nobody, there's no fruit pie here at all. They just, um, but what, what I sort of figured out was that I don't think that people would know what time of day to eat it. <laughs> it would just like be too confusing. Brits are really about like the time of day that's proper yeah. to eat it. And and can you have tea at X nighttime yeah. when you have your fruit pie? Because meanwhile Americans are like eating it at midnight, not <laughs> Yeah, all the time. Yeah. So. Are there alternative dessert bar like do people serve alternatives to wedding cake at all? Cupcakes? Yeah. Yeah, they do. They do. Like little like sort of petit four kind of things. But it never replaces the cake. Not usually, no. But some people do like cheesecakes, like out of uh, wheels of cheese. That's a big thing because the cheese tradition in the UK is incredible. Um, so I've had quite a few um, people do, uh, that I know do like, you know, a huge Montgomery's cheddar and then like a... Oh my god, actual cheese, not actual cheesecake. Cheese. Actual cheese, yeah. And the beautiful, like, you know, the, the sort of raw rind that's on the outside of it. So it's beautiful. really gorgeous. So it's like, um, the Montgomery's cheddar is a traditional, the, like one of the first cheddar cheeses, and it's sort of like that big. That's the size that they make it in. And then there's like a Stilton, which would be like that. So it looks like a cake. It looks like it a looks wedding really cake. amazing, yeah. So it's a cool alternative. And it's not a cheese course, it is the dessert course. Yeah, I think then they maybe, they, it just depends. And maybe they do Interesting. Some chocolate or something, I don't know. Does anyone else? Ah. Yeah, hi, I was just wondering what your personal favorite cake is to make. Um, and I wanted to know if you have any like favorite cakes that you've made that you think are like really unique? Oh, good question. Um, my personal favorite cake is chiffon cake, actually. Is what? Chiffon. Chiffon. Which is not a good wedding cake, because it's really <laughs> soft. <laughs> but um, I have done it, but for a small, on a small scale, yeah. But I love how it's like just fluffy and airy and just so good, yeah, totally. Any flavor, yeah. Hello. Hi. I'm from Northern California as well, so that's pretty cool. Awesome. <laughs> also, how are you dealing with this large or rather just more affluent influ intake of clients after this room? Um, it's, we're really, luckily we were able to just kind of dig in and do it. We hired a few more people um, and we just, uh, you know, took the orders, said yes, and then figured out how to make them. Um, that, that's one of the things, I mean, I think you can be scared and not go for it and you kind of have to take a bit of a risk and, um, but luckily what happens is because the footfall was was doubling as well as the orders for the cakes that was helping us like to be able to hire more people um, uh, and do that and it was fun it was like a buzz everybody was like happy working there too so that helps the morale is really good and really high so yeah it's good it's nice Any more questions? actually I have one more now that I've you asked about her favorite cake mm. and I feel like when you ask planners or designers or florists like what's one wedding they never want to see again like I think now we're all just like enough blush like no more um, what's one cake you could do without or is there one <laughs> no, no I'm, 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 I'll do anything <laughs> everybody has different tastes so I, I'll do I, you'll do whatever but isn't is there one that you feel like could be re reinvented rather or well I kind of agree about the fruitcake thing I mean I uh, Americans also do not really prefer fruitcake um, but there's a we do a Christmas cake in England which is a fruitcake and it's soaked in brandy and it's actually really really delicious and we candy all the fruit so we do um, grapefruit uh, tangerine 
orange, lemon, and then all these really interesting uh, other citruses that we're getting from Sicily. So green mandarin and cedro and these really interesting flavors, bergamot. And we take all that and we put it in the cake. So for me, like at Christmas, it's an amazing thing. But for a wedding, I also, I thought it was like really cool when they were like, we do not want fruit cake because that helped to open up, because everybody listened to that, so it helped to like really open up the sort of, you know, possibilities to do. Sorry? Was that frowned upon by the royal family that they didn't want that? I don't think so. I think they were like, cool, okay. you know. I mean, you kind of wonder like, when William and Kate like just had a fruit cake a couple years ago. <laughs> like, no, I don't think so. I think it's fine. <laughs> Does anyone else have any other questions? Oh yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Sorry, back there in the blue. Hi. How are you? Hi. How did you deal with uh, critiques? You know, people that criticize, like even after the real wedding cake, they're like, "Why would you make it like that?" Yeah, we got a lot of that. How did you deal with that? <laughs> it was fine. You know, I thought um, everybody's entitled to their feelings about, you know, buttercream. It's like, <laughs> but it's just. Like, it's just a cake. I felt really, um, I felt really happy with the result personally, and um, the couple was really happy. We got a lot of great feedback, so you know, it was okay. There were some haters, but it was okay. It's fine. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it it's actually good, right? tastes good. So good. You know, there's a yeah, and we did a Swiss meringue buttercream on that one. Um, you know, and that's just like it's so silky and delicious, and it's less sweet. Yeah, it's the best. Exactly. Do you have one? Well, my question was for an Alice Waters story, but I was also asked to ask Trisha, what did the queen think? <laughs> and she said that she um, I'm glad that you asked it because I tried to leave her out of it. <laughs> I didn't want to get you in trouble. I really don't know. I would love to know. Um, I was asked recently who who in the world I'd like to make or who I'd like to eat my cake. And I was like, I had the Queen and Oprah eating my cake on the same day. Like, I'm <laughs> done. <laughs> and Idris Elba, right? Yes. To me as a win. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So. You have one, oh, sorry, over there. Um, right now, so I'm planning my wedding right now. What are the most popular flavors that you see couples going with? Well, lemon elderflower is really popular. <laughs> <laughs> really, really popular. <laughs> Um, but fresh, bright flavors um, have been really popular, and like sponge, you know, so sponge cake. And uh, we do also, we do lots of different curd fillings um, because we try to balance the sweetness. Um, but yeah, so fruit flavors and have been really popular. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. What are some of your favorite bakeries in New York? Well, I just have like a list and I'm going, I just got here, so I'm going to go this week. I have a few days and I'm going to go around and try some stuff. Um, I haven't actually been anywhere yet. I went to uh, Flora Bar. Um, <laughs> do you work there? Yes. <laughs> amazing. Um, and I had, so I went and I tried a bunch of the, the cream puffs were amazing. Um, and I got a bunch of cookies and things to take home with me too. So well done, guys. It's awesome. Yeah. Ignacio is like a really good friend of mine. So yeah, it's so nice. Uh, so that place is amazing. Um, and then, yeah, where else am I supposed to go? Sorry. Um, I really want to go to Mazedar, but I've never been there. Um, and then I'm going to, somebody told me about a steamed chocolate cake. Do you know about this? Steamed chocolate cake from... Bread's Bakery. Yeah, okay. And Arcadia, Arc is that right? Bread? <laughs> Okay. Oh, Arcade. Arcade. Oh, it's yeah, I need to go there. Arcade. Um, I like love this. She's a good right? yeah, yeah, I was like, maybe ask her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm just, I, I, you know, yeah, do you live here? I do. Yeah, do you have any suggestions? No, I went to hear where you <laughs> were recommended to go. Yeah, yeah, those places. Yeah, that's all, I, that's all I've gotten so far. Wait, I have an idea. After your bakery tour, you can tell Bazaar your favorite bakeries and Perfect. we'll publish it. Yay! So okay. Know. Yeah. Thanks. Stay tuned. <laughs> Perfect idea. Yeah, go ahead. One more question. Do you find now that you no longer can spend time in the kitchen because you're yeah. running the business? 
Yes, so um, that happened quite a few years ago that I, that I took myself out of the kitchen to run the business um, and to do like the public facing side of things because uh, oh, it was a disaster. I mean like my coworkers were like, can you please get out of the kitchen because I would just like be so distracted talking to customers that would come in or like trying to, you know, it was juggling, trying to do too many things. So now I hire really well and do what I'm best at, which what is the other stuff. Sorry? Who are your bakers? There, I have uh, I have five now. Uh, a really great team, and they come from all over the world, actually. So, Israel, New Zealand, England, America. What? Isaac. I yes, Isaac. Isaac. Yes. yes, Isaac. Yeah, we all need from... to hang out after this. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a lot everywhere. Any chance yeah. you want to come to Philadelphia? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, did I answer the question? Yeah, okay. I think there's one more back there too. Sorry, another question. Um, yeah. Now with the cake changing, mm. with like the fondants, 3D, you know, like perfection, I know you like buttercream, you know. It's yeah. Like no, I love all that stuff. I just don't do it myself. But okay. I'm like totally impressed by those trends. Like, okay, with the fondants, right? Yeah. Okay. So would you advise the bride like to go for fondant or like for the cream? I mean, absolutely. If that's w I, I wouldn't advise. I wouldn't advise that because I want the job and I don't do it. <laughs> but if like that's what somebody wants to do, I'm totally into it. And I was just looking through. Um, um, Colin Cowie's the magazine, and there's a picture in there of a cake by <coughs> Sam Godfrey, and I used to, I just think his cakes are so incredible. Perfect endings, do you guys know that? that? Oh, yeah, in Napa. Um, and I hadn't thought about him in a, in a while, and th that was nice to see that in there, and that, they, you know, he does the most amazing things with sugar work and fondant, and so, yeah, I mean, super cool. Yeah? What's the average cost of a wedding cake for a <laughs> in pounds, yeah. It, I mean, our cakes uh, are not as expensive as some um, because we don't do all that really <coughs> elaborate work. But um, pretty much wedding cakes start at 10 pounds a person. Yeah. $20 a person. Not around. quite. It's like a little like, less now. Like 14. 14. 14. Yeah. 14. Yeah. Thank you. Nice to yeah. Here. Yeah. And that's for like people to go and set it up in the space and everything. Oh, so, yeah. And if you are talking about like fondant, sugar work, do you have any concept of that or because you don't do it? I mean, cakes can it? cost 20 grand, you know, yeah. 30 grand. It's cakes can be. Sky's the limit. <laughs> yeah. Literally, yeah. I mean, Priyanka yeah. Chopra and Nick Jonas just put a house on a cake stand. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there were windows. There's someone in the back. Yes. Well, if you're having cupcakes, how many flavors would you say, um, oh, sure. If you are having cupcakes at yeah. your event, how many flavors do you recommend? Um, does that make any sense? For sure, yeah. I mean, I think it depends. I mean, it, it depends kind of what you want the look to be um, and how they're going to be displayed. You could, you could, you know, style style it so that you're only showing something that really goes with the look of what you're doing. But then you could have many other flavors in the back. We often do things. We do like vegan and gluten free options, um, so you can have all that stuff available <coughs> for people if you want to. Yeah, but I think you want to think about what it looks like. Um, you know, in the display. So, yeah. Yeah, I love cupcakes. <laughs> okay. So I, I think Done? that's all the time that we have. But apparently, we're all hanging out after this because that was like such a like a community discussion. <laughs> I was into it. Thank you so much. Thank you.